G'day and welcome back for another look through the pages of popular mechanics magazines from the past and I found this one now, this is really interesting because there's been a lot of discussion recently about the Hyperloop, this is a, an Elon Musk concept where we'll have sort of like railway carriages whizzing around at almost supersonic, well maybe supersonic speeds through tubes which kind of like vacuum you know, air tubes and it will enable you to get from point to point really quickly without having to worry about the issues that currently plague conventional trains and so forth. So you might think, wow, this is a pretty radical, what a great, wonderful new idea, but actually popular mechanics, we're onto it. Now this is the uh, December 1957 edition, so it's really old, but look what they've got in here. Who would have thought they would have been able to predict the future with such accuracy? And it says here, Honeywell engineer predicts that by AD 2000, cars will slip through a network of crash-proof pneumatic tubes. Look at that, the Tesla set up. Look, that's the Hyperloop, isn't it? It's pretty much the same thing. Vehicles travelling through tubes. Fantastic. Now, this was a Honeywell engineer apparently, so it was Honeywell who were onto the plot. They got it really early. So there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, Mr. Elon Musk has not really come up with new ideas. He's just looked at old ideas and sort of how they can produce these in the 20th century. And it's not just Hyperloop. I found another article in an old edition of Popular Mechanics. Let me just find it here. And this was the, these are all a bit old, so they're a bit frail. Let me take this out of the way. Let me show you this one. This is the 1960, February 1960 edition of Popular Mechanics. And in here, you're not going to believe it, but the Army's flying platform is Jeep of the Air. Now, I remember seeing this concept revisited just not so long ago when there were proposals that a sort of flying quadcopter or hexacopter would be the army jeep of the future, the flying jeep. But look at this, this is 1960, this is how many years ago? Um, what is it, 50, 53, 57 years ago, my goodness. And they had the idea then, and here it is in the, and this is the Curtis Wright Corporation was developing this. So again, nothing new under the sun at all. And from the June 1955 Popular Mechanics, we've got the Hella Flying Platform. This was another wonderful piece of technology that came out of the USA in the 50s when so much money went into developing really crazy ideas. This was the flying platform. This was a duct with two contra-rotating propellers and a coanda lip. So it got most of its lift from this little lip around the side actually. And it was a fantastic device, but it just had a few shortcomings, which meant it never really made it into service. So, but there's a crowd I think in Israel now making these, I call it the hummingbird or something. If I can find some information, I will put it in the description of this video. But it shows you again, nothing is new under the sun. Almost anything you can think of has already been thought of. And as we know, electric vehicles were one of the first kinds of horseless carriages. That was before the, even the, uh, the gasoline motor. They had the electric powered horseless carriages in here. And this popular mechanic from 1957, um, here's a guy that's retrofitted one, an old car with his own electric motor, which he says is actually too powerful for the car, so woohoo, doesn't give any mileage figures, it doesn't, doesn't tell you how far he goes on a single charge, but I suspect it's not very far. But this is the kind of innovation that we had back in the 50s, it was a brilliant time, a brilliant era when people were not limited by anything, they just went out and bought stuff and did stuff. Of course one of the things driving this was the massive amount of World War II surplus equipment that went on the market at the end of World War II, you could buy so much stuff for pennies, just pennies really. In fact, let's see if we can find some ads in here with some World War II stuff for sale. Now here's a great example of what I'm talking about. Look at this, save up to 85% war surplus gadgeteers heaven. This was the kind of stuff, these war surplus places, they had so much really crazy stuff at really incredibly low prices. I mean, say you wanted some gears. Well, look down here, this piece down here, we've got this little transmission gearbox there. You could buy all the gears you want for $8.49. And, uh, Electric actuators for $6.95. This stuff was like given away compared to the actual cost of manufacturing because it was surplus at the end of the war. So it created a fertile environment for people to get out there and tinker around and invent stuff. And of course, that was also driven by the fact that there was a, a culture of bettering yourself and a culture of learning in the USA in the 1950s. If we go to the front of this magazine, you'll see that there was just so many solicitations for, for things like uh, courses, learning courses. For example, here's a solicitation, become an accountant. You can earn lots of money being an accountant. Um, and 
ICS, International Correspondence Schools, they were in all these magazines because they had this, a huge range of training courses you could do by correspondence and you would be able to become a, anything from an air conditioning engineer to a, an automotive engineer by studying their correspondence courses. Then of course there were these books and things that told you everything you need to know about repairing your own car. People repaired their own cars in those days. It was like a pastime, save yourself a lot of money. Then you could become a radio television technician because those were the days when you actually fixed a radio or a television. If it broke, you didn't just go and buy a new one because they were expensive items. So this was a huge career opportunity for many people. And then of course, there was the, all these people that bought that World War surplus stuff were, were tinkering and coming up with ideas. And so there were solicitations for people to bring their inventions along and have them um, patented and so forth. So there's lots of stuff like this calling on inventors to come along and do their thing. See, another page, inventors and more, more uh, training courses. It's ICS again, more training courses. It's like, it was, it was an era when you could do anything. There was no limit to what people could do if they just applied themselves, got the training and did it. So just like, and electronics was the big, big subject back, was the big career option back then because it was all new and we're going from valves to transistors and everything was electronic, much like everything was computers a few years ago. And see television, it's like, it's, it's unbelievable how much stuff was in here, well, automotive, diesel, all these things inviting you to be trained as an expert in a particular field because there was massive employment back then. There was no unemployment. It was all, you know, um, jobs for everybody. It was a wonderful time after the war, very prosperous. So that's, why these magazines are a wonderful insight into the culture and society of the world, you know, 50, 60 years ago. And I just love browsing through them and seeing what I can find. It's, it's incredible. Um, even when you come to look at it, you can tell how much was, was being done because by the classifieds. We've got so many pages of classified advertising. That's why I kept these magazines alive was all the advertising. Look at this. These are people who are trying to sell stuff, trying to buy stuff, trying to, you know, obviously there's people out there in their own businesses doing a lot of work and that's how, whole, that's how it all worked. People were self-sufficient, they, they didn't expect handouts, they went out and they earned their own money and they retrained, did what they needed to do. Fantastic. So um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting way to look at the world the way it was back then. There was usually a cigarette out on the back, oh no, there we go, yeah you can even go and join the Air Force. Look at that, fantastic. So. Um, I'll be doing some more stuff. Oh, here's one. Here's one. This was the normal advertising back back in the days when you smoking wasn't such an evil thing, and uh, you know it's the world has changed. The world has changed. You can't. Uh, not many people advertise tobacco anymore. Um, so I'll look through some more of these, and if you're interested, let me know. Put a comment in there saying, "Yeah, we want to see more." Otherwise, I won't do it. But um, as I go through and look through them, I find little gems like the ones I've shown you today, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. More popular mechanics, popular science magazines coming up if you want it.